Welcome back to PDAC, our special live commodities coverage. I jumped the gun before the break. I was too excited to get to Pierre Lassonde, the chairman of Franco Nevada. It's great to see you. Thank you. I just want to remind the viewers of how intimately you know this story. Back in 1985, you and your partner, Seymour Schulich, took out a royalty on a little mine called Gold Strike. Yep. That turned out to be the making of Barrick. And then subsequently, when Newmont Mining did a merger of Franco Nevada and Normandy of Australia, you became president of Newmont Mining. That's right. And not only that, but in 2004, when I was president, we actually tried to do a merger of our Nevada assets and we failed. Nevada and... Uh, so it's been uh, tried three times. It's nothing new. It's something that you know, should have been done a long time ago, but when you look at Sudbury, it's 100 years and it's still not done. Okay, so it's not... You have to look at it um, in terms of operating costs as well. The savings are maybe a couple hundred million a year, but if you divide that by you know, two, it's 100 million each. On operating costs of five billion, it's 2%. So I think you have to look a bit at, at, in perspective. It's not the end all and be at all of like, you know, doing a merger. But as you know, uh, Mark Risto of Barrick is talking about synergies of hundreds of million a year, 500 million a year. So yeah, those are a mirage in the desert, okay? Like, I mean, in the mining industry, forget it. It doesn't, you know, once he gets there to the mirage, you'll see it will evaporate. You were skeptical um, that he could ever make a, a take under bid work. You, you don't think he's getting new much with this offer? Well, it's a discount. I mean, when have you ever heard of a hostile at a discount? I mean, like, come on. I mean, you know, it makes no sense whatsoever. None. And then the synergies are promises, you know, like, uh, there are some synergies, but only in Nevada, nowhere else. And oh, don't forget that in the last five years, both companies have been taking out a lot of costs out of Nevada. So when you talk about synergies, you're really talking about one using the other one's mill or that, you know, that kind of thing, but you're not talking about taking out like you know, thousands of people. So I would be very, very careful about the real amount of synergies that's available. So, so they're apparently talking in New York City today about a joint venture, but people shouldn't get too excited. It's not going to be transformational, whatever deal they do. No, it's not going to be in transformational because as I just said, the impact on costs, yeah. it's like two, 3% maximum. So like, don't think that that's transformational. Do you think Bristow struck because he saw that the Newmont takeover of Gold Corp wasn't all that popular with all investors? Oh, I think that it's more about being number one. You know, um, when uh, we did the triple merger back in 2001, Newmont for a year was the largest gold company in the world. Well, what did Barrick do? They went out and they bought Placer Dome and Homestake so that they could be number one. And then they went up to eight million ounces a year of production. Mm -hmm. And what happened? Over the following 10 years, production has fallen to five million ounces. And it just goes to show you how difficult it is to replace eight to 10 million ounces a year. And now they'd be talking of replacing 12 million ounces. If they manage to swallow new months. That's right, forget it. You know, like it's, it's just not, it's feasible, period. It does run against counter to what both Bristow and Thornton have been saying at Barrick. Oh, we don't want to get big for the sake of getting big. We're all about profits. Yeah, well, I would discount that. Okay. So, um, could is there a risk Gold Corp does get left out in uh, get left out in the cold here? Well, there's four weeks left for the vote. So, um, and I'm sure that Mr. Bristow and Thornton will think of other things uh, to do to uh, prevent the merger. But at this point, what the market is saying is Newmont is winning. Yeah, because Newmont's trading at a premium to the paper value of uh, that's, that's uh, correct. Of, of Barrick's offer. I mean, but think about it. Over the last five years, the Newmont stock is up 65% because they've been managed to operate their mine you know, really well, excellent. They built a great balance sheet. And the Barrick stock is down 22% over the same time. So who's been the better steward of shareholders' money? Are you surprised that um, Goldberg of Newmont is getting quite personal? I mean, he had a picture of John Thornton in his presentation and a, a picture of Barrick's languishing stock. Well, you know, when you have the personalities that they have, it tends to get personal. I mean, look at Mr. Trump as president, okay? It gets very personal, same thing. Okay, and of course, they had to go with Mark Bristow. They said, Rangel's stock went up when he was developing, but yep. once he started operating, that they claimed the stock went sideways. Well, what they're yeah, saying is that he's a great geologist. He's found a number of deposits, and uh, the reality is that 
you know, when you look at history has shown that 90% of the value in our business is created by the drill bits, okay, by exploration. And, and Mark has been a great explorationist. He's produced value. But as an operator, the stock has gone sideways, okay? Of the two, I would say that the Newmont have been maybe a better operator, and it's a much bigger company, okay? The other one was a very small company. They only had like three mines and a joint venture. That's easy to operate. You can operate, if you want, without a head office. Mm -hmm. But when you got 22 mines in like 18 countries and everything else, to think you know you don't need IT, you know, communication for everybody and anything else, that's, no, it doesn't happen. Yeah, because apparently at one point, well, Barrett got to 500 people and he has been slashing that head office. You're a little concerned about the loss of Canadian status in mining. Yeah, it, that, that is a recurring problem in Canada is that we built great companies and then we sell them off to the rest of the world. Australia has prevented that. They've kept BHP home. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you find that um, it would have been really better for Canada if we kept some of those companies. But you know, Canada is a free country, and the great thing is that we do manage to uh, recreate more new companies. The one thing about Canada is we have the second largest land mass in the world, so we're going to be in the mining business forever. Okay, and that's the good point. Speaking of which, of course, PDAC is in part an incubator for new companies, yeah. they tout their projects, but you reckon there really haven't been enough exciting discoveries in recent years? No, if you look at the last 20 years, the uh, exploration efforts for the money that's been put in has not returned shareholders money, and that's why you see a disinterest by the vast majority of shareholders, and also has not produced the discoveries that this industry needs. So if you think, you know, one of the reasons why Newmont is buying Gold Corp is because they have great deposits there that will take 20 years to get developed. But in terms of new discoveries, it's been blah, really, in the last 20 years. I mean, the great Gold Strike discovery, you know, 50 plus million ounces, Yanacocha, 50 plus million ounces, those are all in the 80s and the 90s. Since the end, the diamond discovery in the north and Boise's Bay, they're all in the 80s and 90s. There's been nothing like it in the last 20 years in Canada. So Franco, your business model in part is helping a company build a mine, and so if, if these giant, whatever giant company is created in this three-way merger dance, they'll probably spin off assets, and so you might help a purchaser of those assets to finance it. Well, we did that in 2015-16 uh, when we helped Lundin Mining buy Candelaria okay. off Freeport. In Chile, and, yeah, 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 that was a really, a really good deal for everybody. Uh, and then uh, tech got in a bit of trouble with their balance sheet, so we did the Antamina stream, uh, and then Glencore got in real trouble with their balance sheet, so we did the Antapakai deal. And those three deals are probably the three best gold deals that have been done in the last 10 years. Even though they're copper mines, for us, they're the best gold mines because they go on for 30, 40, 50 years. Of course, your big bet is Cobre Panama, the, yep. uh, the first quantum uh, deal there in Panama. It's more than 20% of your asset value, according to what TD calculates. So you're happy, that one seems to be moving ahead okay. You know, uh, we have had a great experience with First Quantum and uh, they're uh, on time, on budget, they will have this thing rolling. They've already put the first ore through it. And for us, it's like 30% increase in revenue over the next two years. It's a big, big, uh, you know, injection in the arm here. Pierre, thanks very much indeed. It's Always been great a pleasure. To you. Thanks. Thank you. Pierre Lasson, Chairman of Franco Nevada.